Hello! If you have a naturally aspirated CVH, you will have a EGR system. Um, more or less what the EGR does is it's vacuum powered, so there's a vacuum valve like this. Um, a giant vacuum diaphragm, this connects to your vacuum lines. Uh, I'm not sure it's off, I think it's off the manifold and not the carb. But uh, under certain vacuum that will open up, allowing exhaust pressures to go back into the intake, um, which isn't necessary, or for that matter, good for your engine, um, especially if that valve fails. If that valve fails, you're always exchanging your exhaust with your intake. And if that fails, it, there's a certain way that can fail that causes you to run a lean mixture all the time, which leads to backfiring. Also, there's this little, it's supposed to be a one-way valve. I can't remember where this other end goes, but this is normally bolted up to the manifold. And this, uh, the one-way valve fails, and what happens is you start sucking a whole lot of air down that tube into your exhaust manifold and then you start backfiring too. So there is a, a lot of issues with EGRs, more so when they fail. When they're working, they're somewhat reliable, but when, they're fa when they fail, it's hell. So how to delete it? On your manifold, you'll have, uh, you'll have two pipe fittings. You can see that I've welded mine shut, but you'll have a big fitting for the main EGR tube. And then you'll have a small fitting for this one-way valve guy. And I can't remember where this goes. Maybe it went to the catalytic converter, or maybe it was just open to air. But we capped it off, and uh, wherever the other end was, we pinched that shut to and capped that off. And then at the EGR, you can simply unplug the vacuum line, cap this off, cap off your other vacuum line, and then you're good to go. Um, which, which just leaves this tube left. You can leave it hooked up if you'd like, as long as you disable this valve, not a problem. Uh, what you can also do is just remove this guy. It's really hard to do in the engine bay. I didn't remove that until my engine came out. Because this is underneath your, your thermostat housing, your coolant line, and your distributor, so it's really hard to get at. Plus the fitting is down here, and you need a massive adjustable wrench to work at this, and you need to get that ridiculously hot, uh, depending on how many winters your car has seen. Same with the other end. Uh, the best way to take that off is while both manifolds are mounted to the block, again with your block outside the engine, then you can reef on these pretty good without breaking stuff. And then once you pull these out, what you do is you cap off the uh, cap off the, the pipe fitting that that goes into on the intake manifold. I've already capped mine off. You just use a little Teflon tape to help seal it because you, uh, if it doesn't seal when you cap it off, you'll always run lean and you'll, you could backfire. Uh, again, depending on how lean you are. On the other end, you can do the same thing by a pipe fitting plug, screw it into your manifold. Uh, brass would be better on this end. This end you can use whatever you want as long as you have some uh, that Teflon tape you'll be fine, but on this end you'll want something soft because the Teflon tape will just burn. Or you can do what I did, lob off both the fittings, weld them shut, completely shut so you don't have any exhaust leaks and then you're good to go otherwise. So once all that's done, you can chalk this guy off to the side. Uh, you can see I dropped my other one, so you can get rid of that too. Again, just plug the hole or uh, grind it off, weld it shut. And then, if you want to remove your EGR air valve, you know, might as well if you're not using it, you'll shed a, you'll shed a pound or two doing it. Um, and then you just need to make your own uh, cap plate. 
what you do is you take the take a new gasket for this guy and then use that as your template for a chunk of steel it doesn't have to be too thick because it's only going on an intake manifold but about a quarter inch thick or a tab less is fine uh, bolt that up there uh, make sure it has a thin film of gasket sealer on both sides of the gasket so when you bolt it on there initially it has a really good seal because uh, it won't ever really get wet so the gasket can't swell and seal by itself so if you use a thin film of crap on it it will seal great uh, once you do that it looks a lot cleaner in here there's plenty of room underneath the distributor now there's nothing ridiculous here there's nothing insane right here uh, just by getting rid of that EGR valve, the valve itself, and then that one main tube that comes around here, you can actually do your oil changes from behind the engine now. You can see my oil filter. Helps a lot to get that crap we gone. Uh, plus, you don't have to worry about it failing and then causing horrendous backfires and the whole nine yards. So we'll leave it at that for now. Um, I want to mention that the EGR systems vary whether you have the 1.9 or the 1.6. So me, I had 1.6 manifold, uh, but I had replaced my 1.6 intake with a 1.9 because it has bigger bores. That's why my EGR is a little different. The valve placement on the 1.9s, it's perpendicular to the engine. On the 1.6s, they angle it kind of like that in line with the engine. And then they have a different pipe fitting and a different pipe going between the two. But otherwise, uh, the thread pitch on the manifolds are relatively the same. I think when you go between the 1.9 and the 1.6, you take that thing and flip it around if you can, but I don't recommend reusing those or replacing those. Just omit them. I mean, you, you're emissions exempt already, so might as well just do it. But otherwise, otherwise, uh, that's about all there is to it. It takes a fair amount of time considering you have to pull the engine out. But once you have the engine out, it goes easy peasy. Maybe it takes 15 minutes to do. And I do sell the EGR back uh, delete plates if you're interested. Mine look prettier. Um, that one is just cut to fit because I was getting impatient. I didn't have time to clean off the edges. But I make it look exactly like the, the diamond shape that it's supposed to be. Uh, maybe I'll have a link in the description for that. But anyhow, that's all there is to it. So good luck and see you next time.